So her drinking is not going to disturb the shoot. Okay, so we often get the question about using the RV in winter or in cold weather. And um, all RVs are not going to be as good as a house in cold weather, so you got to set your expectations. But there are certain attributes of an RV that make it better or worse in cold weather. Uh, the, our experience with the New Horizons has been very good. We've been down into the low teens for weeks at a time, never getting above 20, um, and, and have been very comfortable in it. Uh, some of that has to do with insulation, and most people's tendency is to just look at the insulation values when evaluating an RV, but there's a lot more to it than that. Insulation is certainly a factor, but it's not the most important factor. It is just a factor. Here's a cutout of the roof of uh, New Horizons, and this is the exterior of the roof here. It's one-piece fiberglass. It's pebbled, so it's safe to walk on when it's a little wet. And then there are two two-inch layers of foam with the air conditioning duct cut into it. So each, each foam layer is R10, so that gives you an R20 value for the roof. Now, that's just the foam. There's also a padded ceiling. This is the interior ceiling here. And you know, you got a quarter inch of foam there, and you got a piece of wood here, and you got a piece of wood here. So that does add R value to the rig. But we don't really count that because there's, there's no way to quantify what that is. You can look up some material R's, and that's what most manufacturers do. They add that in, and then they'll say they have like an R28 roof because of the other components. Um, I don't tend to say that. I just say it's R R20 um, plus whatever this is. But, uh, but again, that's not the most important factor. We find that air infiltration is more important than just R value. Uh, air infiltration comes from around your slide seals and more importantly from around your windows. The uh, windows in a conventional RV with double hung windows where they go up and down or slide side to side uh, lets in a lot of air in. First of all, there's weep holes in it to let drainage out, let drain water out. And second of all, there's a brush type system that allows that window to slide. And a lot of air comes in around that brush. In fact, it's interesting if you have an RV like that, take a match, blow it out, and let the smoke go near where that is. You can be a foot away and you'll see that smoke just take off if it's windy outside at all. Right now we're at the New Horizons factory in Kansas and the wind's probably 25 to 30 outside. Um, and if you were to take smoke and go around this RV, you would see very little movement in this RV. So what adds to your comfort is lack of air movement. So if you have an RV that's sealed up pretty good, then you're going to be more comfortable even if you happen to have a lesser R value than an RV that doesn't have those attributes. So it's not just about insulation. So this, this is the ceiling and this is the walls. So the exterior of the wall is here. It's a very heavy um, piece of fiberglass, gel coated fiberglass with a very heavy piece of wood on it. And what this does in the 2015 models it, is it, it stops, it minimizes any ripple on the outside of the rig. The 2015 New Horizons are very, very ripple free. I would say that it's uh, best of breed in the industry right now. Uh, I've not seen another rig that had a better exterior as far as ripple goes than a, new, than a 2015 New Horizons. Uh, as you can see, this is R7.5 foam. It's an inch and a half piece of foam. And then it has inside, it has the wall board that you see inside the rig. Um, so it's, it's good R value. Um, a two inch wall would be better. A two inch wall would be R10. Um, so it would contribute to it. Um, the slide seals for me is what does it. New Horizons uses a triple slide seal. It's got two flanges and a rubber bulb and that really seals around the slides very well and it has very good blocking in the corners that's where you get a lot of air infiltration is in through the corners um, so New Horizons has has a very good system for that is it perfect I would say no it's not perfect if the winds blowing right I could I could put smoke down there and you would see some minor movement but our experience is that we can heat this rig very easily and I'll get to the heating in a minute um, the the frameless windows that we have in here are excellent. They're double pane. 
they're, they're the same ones used widely in the industry. The attribute that I really like about them is that they go flat down. When they open, they go flat down onto a bulb. So there's no air infiltration around them at all. It's, it, it's an amazing difference. We went from our 2012 rig, which had conventional RV windows, into this with the frameless windows, this 2015. And the, and the results were immediately apparent. And these are double pane windows. A lot of people think that the frameless windows are not double pane, but the double pane are available and that's what you, New Horizons uses. So use of the double pane windows, um, the frameless windows, use of re really good slide seal technology really contributes to the comfort inside the rig. Now people ask, how do you heat the rig? Um, and of course we have RV furnaces. We have two furnaces in this rig. They're two stage furnaces. Unlike the older furnaces on stage one, they're very, very quiet. You can barely hear them. Stage two, you can hear them, but they're nowhere near as noisy as the old furnaces. And they do quite a good job. What New Horizons does is they try to hide the um, vents, the ducts, and they're under the kickboards here. And they're also in the back here. There's also a couple um, which will uh, be out of your walk area. So there's nothing in your walk area. Now, when do we use the furnace? In, in 20 degree weather, we don't use the furnace at all. Um, and people find that shocking. What we do is we use our fireplace. The fireplace looks quite nice. Um, this is a Dimplex fireplace. It's the best in the industry right now. I can't find one better that looks more real. And it puts out quite a bit of heat, about the same as a little cube heater, but it distributes it better, which makes it more effective. And then we turn on our floor heat. So down to the low 20s, we use our floor heat, our underfloor heat, and the Dimplex fireplace. And that's all we use. We don't turn the furnace on at all. And that works quite well for us. Um, below 20, low 20s, you're going to run your furnace occasionally. Now the way the New Horizons is, is um, ducted for the furnaces, from each for each of the two furnaces, and there's two furnaces in anything 40 foot or over, from, the two, from each of the two furnaces a duct is dedicated to the tank and um, storage area underneath. So no matter which furnace you're running, there is some heat going down into your storage belly, belly to keep the tanks from freezing. People ask, do they need an Arctic package? The Arctic package wraps the external uh, drain lines with heat tape and it puts foam um, over some of the piping that's, that's more exposed. Um, and my answer is, if you're going to be below zero for long periods of time, then yes, you might want to do that. But we've found that um, with, with normal cold down into the teens or even single digits, you don't need it at all. So. Um, for most people, I don't advise the Arctic package. Um, this, this is a very warm rig. We're usually here in, in t-shirts. Uh, today we have fleece on, but uh, usually we're in t-shirts and we're quite comfortable. Uh, the other thing that we have for when we're blue boondocking is a blue flame heater. Now, that's, that runs off of propane and we use the little tanks, the little canisters with it. Um, I don't recommend that for most people unless you're an avid boondocker. I would not use that for normal heating. I actually find I can smell the propane in that, in that burn on that, um, and, it, and it, over time it bothers me, so we tend to shy away from that. Uh, so we're quite happy with our underfloor heat. It works quite well. It is not a primary heat source. We kind of use it as a primary heat source, but it does need the fireplace to supplement it. The other uh, supplemental heat we use is little cube heaters. If you're going to use cube heaters, electric cube heaters, make sure you use the ceramic ones. They're much safer than the lower priced uh, cube heaters. We have actually had a fire in a cube heater on the lower priced ones. Um, and, you know, we got out of it with no harm, but I don't recommend them at all because they are, they're, they are not as safe as the uh, ceramic heaters. So that's how we heat the rig. The, the, the rig is very comfortable in cold temperatures. Uh, we have no issues with cold as far as anything freezing up. Uh, we don't use a lot of propane because if we're plugged in, we use the electric in-floor heat or the supplemental heat. Um, we have two 40-pound tanks, which is more than enough. Um, so when people ask us what we do for heat, that's how we do it. That's what we recommend for heating. So we were, we were talking earlier about how the slides seal. On, on these 
slide seals, you can see there's two flanges. There's one here, there's one that's right up against the slide. So it's double flange. Here's the interior one. And then this other one goes over top of it. So it seals very good. Um, when, you're, when you have your slides out, these are the two that are protecting your rig. And you can see the corner blocking is very tight down here with foam. So you get very little air infiltration in through that. This seal down here is, is quite good. Um, when the slide comes in, this bulb comes into play and it seals it with the outside. There's an outside bulb that goes on this inside bulb. They come together and it seals up quite well. Um, so when you're going down the road, there's never any issue with water getting in or anything like that. This is the bedroom slide we're showing. All the slides are pretty much built the same um, as far as sealing goes, but um, they do seal up quite effectively.